one, you know, uh, high and, you know, high level of interest I have is identifying treatment strategies for MPNs, uh, that are in the accelerated phase. So greater than 10% blast or blast phase of disease greater than 20% blasts historically, uh, with standard treatment approaches, uh, unfortunately, uh, overall survival has been quite limited. Uh, so months, uh, is to what's been seen in the literature. And since 2017, there've been a number of, uh, new agents that have been approved for acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, by the FDA. However, we have very limited data about how these agents perform uh, when uh, applied to to use in accelerated and blast phase MPNs. So these could be uh, intensive chemotherapy. This could be HMA venetoclax. Uh, this could be HMA plus JAK inhibitor. And you know when you uh, when kind of looking at these treatment approaches, uh, what we have found. Uh, so I was able to present uh, some data at ASH this past year. Uh, part of a multi-group study, what we found is that uh, despite kind of all of these these uh, newer therapies, even in the current era of treatment, uh, median overall survival uh, for MPN accelerated or blast phase is somewhere in the neighborhood of six to seven months without there being appreciable differences in survival um, across the three most common treatment approaches, which is intensive chemotherapy, um, HMA-based therapy, and HMA plus venetoclax-based therapy. Now, Risk factors for progression uh, uh, typically focus around the acquisition of high-risk mutations. And when you look at the mutational profile of accelerated and blast phase MPNs versus um, AML, uh, it's actually a very different mutational landscape. So when thinking about uh, accelerated and blast phase MPNs, we see uh, enrichment in mutations for ASXL1. We see enrichment in mutations for TP53. And we see uh, enrichment and mutations for IDH1 and IDH2. So we don't have a, a targeted agent per se for ASXL1. However, you know, use of the LSD1 inhibitor, BAMA-DEMSTAT, and early phase studies in, in essential thrombocytosis uh, and myelofibrosis uh, demonstrated that there, there may be uh, increased efficacy in those with ASXL1 mutations. So, so perhaps we can think about whether LSD1 inhibition has some role uh, specifically for ASXL1 mutated accelerated and blast phase MPNs. Another mutation that's enriched in accelerated and blast phase MPNs uh, is TP53. And in terms of about treatment strategies, um, we should look towards the, the sorts of studies that are being run in uh, MDS and AML, uh, looking at drugs uh, that have specifically been uh, investigated in the TP53 mutant population. Uh, one example would be the CD47 antibody map, which is currently being investigated in a phase three study uh, for TP53 mutated AML. I think the question becomes, if we see benefit in something like TP53 uh, mutated MDS or AML with the drug like map, are we then able to apply or translate those results to TP53 mutated MPNs that are in the accelerated phase or blast phase? There have been retrospective studies um, to suggest benefit with use of IDH inhibition in this patient population. In this past ASH, there was a prospective study um, looking at the combination of ruxolitinib with enosidinib um, in IDH2 mutated uh, accelerated and blast phase MPNs that had very promising early results, albeit only five patients that were analyzed. So I think there's that open question of for patients with an IDH1 or IDH2 mutation, which treatment approaches is best for them? Do you want to incorporate the IDH inhibitor early on versus uh, utilizing it at time of progression or at relapse, uh, which is which is an open question. And uh, but but certainly, I think the fact that IDH one and IDH two mutations are enriched in accelerated and blast phase MPNs uh, absolutely um, uh, needs to be considered in prospective trial design to see if we're able to take advantage of that uh, with the targeted drugs we have available to us.